Here we go. Hey everyone, we're ready for another night of youth community groups. I just wanted to check in with you. I've gotten a few texts about uh, high crossy road scores in Sky Whale. Remember the two groups are competing. Uh, the group with uh, the highest score, you guys are going to get an extra little bonus party for your group. Have a little extra fellowship time. You can invite your friends to. Uh, I'm really excited for tonight to talk to you some about what it looks like to be persecuted. This is a difficult subject to navigate. Um, one, because many of our brothers and sisters around the globe are being persecuted in, in a way that we have never experienced uh, or may never experience in America. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. This is just my opinion. Um, but I believe that you guys, uh, your generation, or your children very well will see um, a heightened level of persecution in America. I could be wrong in that, but again, I just, uh, in my lifetime, seeing the movement of our culture and the acceptance and celebration of sin, um, that is in opposition to the gospel. It's in opposition to those who say we follow Christ. And, and uh, I just see the two, um, they're going to collide sooner or later. I don't know when that is. It's just, again, my opinion. But I think you'll see it or your children. So today, before we dive into all of this, I wanted you to just pause for a moment before you read the scriptures, I, I want you guys to open up in prayer. Ask uh, the Holy Spirit to help us to discern uh, these scriptures, that we would um, take them to heart, and that he would prepare us for the moments in our lifetime uh, that we will experience persecution. You may be thinking, like, I'll never have to go through that. I'll never have to deal with that. Or you might even be asking the question right now, I don't even know what that is, so let's wait and hear what, what Sean's going to say. Let's just pray that the Spirit would guide us today as we dive into His Word. Go ahead and pause, pray that God's Word would be alive and penetrate our hearts and change us and renew us today. All right, go ahead and grab your Bibles. Again, this is one of the most important things that we're able to do together because these words bring life. They're the truth that we need to hear. You don't need my opinions. You need to hear what God says about you today and what he says about himself. Um, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to open up. You're going to read Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. And then again, you're going to read in chapter 7, verses 44 through 60. Okay, so let me reiterate that one more time. It's Acts 6, 8 through 15, and then you're going to jump over to chapter 7. You're going to read chapter 7, verses 44 to 60. Read that now together. It's clear to see that when Stephen brought the people a great message of hope in Jesus Christ, that for many people, uh, it brought them to a place of anger. Uh, they were frustrated, you know, to say, how dare you say that uh, the Son of God has come? You know, the Jewish people were very upset by that message. Um, but Stephen brought that message to them, knowing that it was not popular, that it would bring conflict. I wanted you to hear that right out of the gate. We bring a message of hope, and his name is Jesus. Uh, it's one of grace and compassion and, and of God's love. But that doesn't always receive grace, compassion, and love. Sometimes the response of the individual you're expressing the gospel to is often hatred, uh, anger, bitterness, uh, the, the heart that is closed off to the gospel can oftentimes uh, really 
become offensive towards the one expressing that same hope. So Stephen, and you read it, he is persecuted for what he believes. And man, did he ever express what he believes in Jesus. But is that what persecution looks like today for, for us in the American church? Or when you go to school, wherever it is, uh, GM or Mill Creek, you might go to the school in Erie, or maybe you go to Cathedral or, or Prep. Wait, they're the same, aren't they? Regardless, Collegiate, that's the other one. Bingo, got it. Um, wherever you might go, you may experience persecution on a different level. Now, I, I don't believe, I don't believe that if you share the gospel in your schools, they'll drag you outside, um, you know, tear your clothes and stone you. And I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, but persecution looks very different for us where we're currently at in, in our culture and where we're at in America. However, for many brothers and sisters, uh, persecution is still extremely severe. Uh, they are losing limbs. Literally, their, their hands and arms and legs are being cut off. Uh, they are, I've heard that the stonings are still happening. Uh, the firing squad, you know, they're being imprisoned for decades, if not for a lifetime. They're being threatened, not just themselves, but their uh, their wives, their children, their relatives, uh, everyone is around people's lives in certain countries get threatened uh, if they hear that you're a Christian. It's just a different level uh, and severity of persecution that really includes a lot of bodily harm, loss of life, a loss of property. A lot of people are losing their jobs, their homes. Um, it's just, it's severe. But what does it look like for us? I mean, here's a few uh, ideas. You can kind of wrestle through this uh, in your groups tonight. You know, one of the ways that I think we're being persecuted in America, or we may experience persecution in this way, is that uh, there may be legal action taken against you as a believer. Uh, another way that it might happen is you very well may be excluded or rejected. Now, on this one, I want you to pause the video. My question to you is if you proclaim Jesus to your friends, because I think this is one of our biggest obstacles in the American church, we are worried about this second one, being excluded and rejected. So if you did that in your school, on your sports team, at your lunch table, on the bus, in the locker room, with students that you know are in opposition to the gospel, you know that they are hard-hearted towards Christ or the church or Christianity, and you express the gospel to them, what would happen? Go ahead and talk through that. What do you think would happen? Or maybe it's not even a guess what you think would happen. Maybe you've been there. Uh, maybe you're, one of your leaders wants to share how they've been excluded or rejected because of the gospel. Go ahead and share a story as well. Pause. We'll be right back. And last, um, one of the things that I do believe will happen, I think it goes kind of hand in hand with being excluded and rejected. Um, I think that we too can also be in, in persecution, especially in America. We can be slandered or accused of being uh, unloving, intolerant, um, narrow-minded. You'll hear a lot of words like that. Um, that actually happened to me personally. Uh, again, I don't wanna go into all the details because this is a, a public video and I'm not looking to uh, drag anyone through the mud, but I've been there personally where I've been called actually all three of those um, by several people, unloving, I'm intolerant, I'm narrow-minded, because I said, I believe what the scriptures say are true, and I am standing confidently on the word of God, and I will not back down from it, because this is the hope of the gospel. I can't change the words of the scripture, and I don't want to. Uh, they are truth, and they give life, and we are to be obedient to them and walk under 
uh, their authority, right? Like the scriptures tell us how to live. We don't go to the scriptures and say, we need to tweak this, change that. That doesn't work for me. It's the other way around. The, the Bible gives us the instruction. It gives us the guidance. It, it shows us the path to walk as believers. And I've been called all three of those. Um, intolerant, unloving, narrow-minded, among a lot of other words that I won't repeat on video. Um, solely because... I'm saying my hope is in Christ and his word is true and I will not uh, stray from that. So have you ever had somebody tell you you were unloving, intolerant, or narrow-minded? Go ahead and pause the video and, and discuss that. Uh, do you think that will happen to you? So real quick, I want you to go ahead and turn to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. I think it's important for us to hear these words of this Jesus. Uh, he's giving this instruction to his disciples, but I think it's also a message that we need to hear today. Uh, you may not believe that you will experience this in your lifetime. I think it's a guarantee that you will experience at least the persecution we just spoke about. You may not uh, experience the bodily harm or the loss of your possessions or the destruction of your home. You may not experience that, although our brothers and sisters are around the world. Um, I think we will all experience persecution for the sake of the gospel, for the name of Jesus as Christ followers. But listen to these words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 11, and I hope they bring great hope to you. It says this, verse 11 of chapter 5 of Matthew, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. You have to remember, guys, don't take this personal. When it happens, don't take it personal, but rejoice that it's on Christ's account. Their hatred and their anger and, and their attack, it may be directed at you, but it is ultimately aimed at Jesus. But do you know what? Blessed are those when, when it happens, when you're persecuted, when, when they utter all kinds of evil against you. But listen to verse 12, rejoice and be glad, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Persecution is old school. This has gone on all throughout the scriptures. We've seen uh, men and women of God, people who followed after God, who, who claim the name of Jesus, that they have been persecuted. And Jesus says, just remember that it's, <laughs> it's on my account. Uh, Christ, who went to the cross, who died uh, for our sins, he is, the, the Bible says, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Their attacks are directed at him. And praise be the God, because he can bear the full weight of their sinfulness, the full burden of their threats. He can bear all of that. Uh, it may be aimed at you, but remember, it is for him to truly bear. It was his, and it was finished on the cross. That's Matthew 5, 11. Find great hope in that, uh, that you will be persecuted, but great is your reward in heaven. Uh, one day, we will be able to celebrate with Christ and all that he has accomplished uh, on the cross and one day we will truly rejoice that uh, we have been found worthy enough to suffer for the name of Jesus, which is the beauty of this narrative that Stephen can go even to his death rejoicing that Christ sits on the throne. Stephen was never abandoned in his persecution. Now, did he die? Yes. Was it painful? Likely. But... Think of what he got. Think of what happened when he closed his eyes, breathed his last, and reopened them in the arms of his Savior.
Think of what that was like. What did he gain from the persecution? He gained literally everything. The one who loses his life will gain it. And Stephen is a good example of that. He got to be in the very presence of the one who he was willing to die for. And he truly lived. He was truly with him. He was never abandoned or forsaken. But he was always, always held in the arms of Christ. The presence of the Spirit was with him to the very end all the way into eternity. So what does that mean for us? Well, there's a few things that we can take away uh, with the story of Stephen. And one is that we need to be always prepared and equipped to, to declare the gospel clearly. Uh, we can't beat around the bush. We can't um, use words that are confusing or really long. Like, let's, let's do this clearly so that people know the hope that we have in Christ. Let's never distort, confuse, muddy down the gospel. Let's be clear with the gospel of Jesus. Know this, that the gospel will always go beyond you. The gospel never ends with you. It continues. See, the beauty of of martyrdom or the beauty of persecution is that it expresses a bigger narrative to the onlooker, even to the persecutor, the one that is doing the harm. It expresses who God is and his compassion and his love and his forgiveness and his mercy. There is story after story in church history where the person who was inflicting the harm and doing the most damage to believers, sometimes in, in, in history, we have these records of those being the ones whose hearts were broken and transformed. Uh, we see it with, with Saul. Saul, who turns into Paul and writes the majority of the New Testament. His heart is forever changed. He was the one killing believers. And God used, I believe, even the persecution that he was, he was doing on uh, believers that he was that he was hurting them and and chasing them around and they were living in fear i think that was all part of his story and his transformation there's another story that i love um I, and i to be honest i'm gonna have to go back to my history books to to do this one there's a story in church history where um one of the, I believe it was even one of the disciples, they were tortured over and over and over. Or maybe it was a disciple of one of the disciples. I'll, I'll look it up and, and try to make sure I know this one at, more accurately, but it's always stuck with me. And they, they watched this man just be tortured. And they would say, you know, we could stop all of this. You can live still. You can be with your your family and your friends and you can live until old age takes you and he said i would never do that I, I, like i believe in christ he is my hope he's my joy he's my savior he's my lord i will never say otherwise and um the man who was persecuting him when it came time uh, finally for the death blow uh, i believe that man uh, also died with him uh, it was a church. It was an early church history narrative. I'm, I gotta go study that one. It lingers in my mind, and it's just a, again, the gospel continues through the persecution. The message actually exponentially goes out in the persecution. Um, it was said once that the the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the saints. That. Um, when people die and are persecuted for Christ, that it, it literally goes out and it's like it springs up new believers everywhere. And that, that is encouraging to me that the, the blood isn't, isn't shed um, without cause, right? We're told in the Bible that God's word goes out. It doesn't return to him void. It always, it always accomplishes what it's supposed to and God's sovereignty and his goodness. And so even the, the bloodshed and the pain and the hurt and the fear and all of it, it all accomplishes his purpose. 
which is the gospel being declared and going out to more people and more people being transformed. And it keeps going and it going and going and going. It continues. It's beyond us. Praise Jesus. And last but not least, uh, I just want you to hear, don't be fearful of it. Don't let it slow you down. Don't let it stop you. But pray, I think it's good even now to pray, and that's how I want to close. Pray that he would give you boldness in the midst of persecution, that you would clearly express the gospel when you're being persecuted, that you would be reminded that the gospel goes out in persecution, that it will continue beyond you. It never stops with you, my friends. Let's close here. Let's pray. Let's thank him for his faithfulness. Uh, let's pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted. And let's pray for that kind of boldness to continue to share the gospel no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what the obstacles, whether it be persecution or great comfort and safety. Let's go and declare the goodness of Jesus Christ.